Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another episode of Kinle and Seong Talk Over the Guest. <laughs> <laughs> this is SciPod number nine. Nine. And uh, usually I always say SciPod is a podcast about nothing, but I've come to t- terms now. SciPod is a podcast where Kinle and Seong talk over the guest. So in that in that theme, we have our guest today. Good <laughs> example. <laughs> Oh, would you like to introduce yourself or would you like us to introduce you? Uh, please introduce. Or you, or you introduce us? Introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have in, uh, in the studio today with us, we have Mr. Well, actually not Mr. Because I can't say Mr. to you anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. I feel uncomfortable calling him Mr. Well, we have uh, Aw Taliman. Mm-hmm. Well, Taliman is what his friends affectionately call him. His real name is uh, Aw Jurmi Choing. He is an... Well, he's a writer because I know you do not like mm. it if anyone would call you an author. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a writer. He writes poems. And I'm sure if you follow him on Facebook, uh, you've probably badgered him to edit some of your writings. Mm. So welcome to the podcast. Oh, Thanks. Good to be here. Why, why are you called Talimano, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, it starts from the movie Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice? Yeah, the Michael Keaton uh, character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a scene in the movie where the song comes up. I don't know if you heard it. Come, Mr. Taliman, Talini Banana. Oh, come, Mr. Taliman, yeah. na, 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 na. Let's sing the song. I never watched Beetlejuice. I'm sorry, one <laughs> gone. Yeah, this is in the old movie hall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he came in, in Bhutan. Eh? Yeah. He showed yeah. the Beetlejuice in local yeah. theatre back in the day. Yeah. Oh, cool. Back in the day, there used to be a lot of movies. Really? The what happened then? Like, right now, we don't get... Like, I remember to us... Copyright. Certain... Copyright, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright oh, happened. Yeah, yeah. Or either that or Pinewood has taken over, you know? Pinewood? Yeah, they put this film in. It's the called Pinewood? Oh, I thought it was called Drookwood. I call it Pinewood. We call it Pinewood. Drookwood, apparently, is actually Drookwood, a company. Drookwood, it's actually sorry, a company. I, I'm sorry. It's Drook... actually a company which deals with wood. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Drookwood sounds like a like a dragon's erection. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> like that fellas you're talking about that time. Mm. <laughs> So that's where you get your name, Taliban. Yep. Um, what are you, but why you in that context? Were you singing that song a lot? Or? Yeah, sing, humming the song. Come, Mr. Taliban. So then the name stuck. I think it was Snake who gave it to me. Snake? Yeah, our late friend Snake. See, this is why the, the older gen- rock of Timbu. <laughs> the older generation is way cooler because they had nicknames that like what what's your nickname in your among your friends? Musai de. Musai Kong. Yeah, but then it's Musai. Yes. What's that? Sai? Oh, you want to get into that story. The origin Sai-pop. of Sai. Yes. Is this, oh. is this podcast is called Sai Pod. Oh, okay. And I'm Sai. And this is a podcast. How do you spell it? P-S-Y. Like yeah. Gangnam Style. So Sai, mm. Sai comes from the term Psycho also. Because when I was a mm. kid, I was very hyper energy, energetic. Mm. So people used to call me, I was tall. So my friend called me Tall Psycho Freak. Mm. Okay. So when I went to Lungtin Zampa, we had to paint mm. our class windows. And then I said, oh, King Kong, man. One friend said, you're a psycho. I said, no, I'm a Psy Kong. Mm-hmm. And then everyone started calling me Psy Kong. And I used to play a lot of computer games. So I said, Psy Kong sounds really stupid. So I just shortened it to Psy. Mm-hmm. And so everyone kept calling me Psy. You were trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Basically>. Not boy. <laughs> yeah, but the, that cool nickname, uh, Snake. Uh, was yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Snake, Acid, Soup, Stony. Harry. <laughs> soup is the one that we, we know. Yeah, so okay, that's super. I don't friend, okay. Yeah. One guy came up to me and said, Where? Hmm. What? And who's danger? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> who's, who's danger? <laughs> he wasn't even danger. He's 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 danger. I'm... I don't know if it's a thing, but so one thing that I've noticed. What about you? You don't have a nickname. Oh, oh, I had so many. Um, <laughs> but then they were the most obvious ones. I think the one that I had in high school was Blind Man, <clears throat> which, yeah. if you think about it, is the most unimaginative nickname you could yeah. give somebody. Not creative. <laughs> not creative. Not creative, <laughs> not creative well, at well, all. Blind Willie McTell, the, the blues man. No, but then well, see, Blind Willie McTell yeah. could play. play the thing, but there was nothing for me. It was just like my friends just used to call me Blind Man. But you can sing. Okay, there we go then. Another one was somebody called me penalty. Penalty. When I was in Lungan Zampa, I told you I used to play. Uh, they used to put me on the goalie, goalie, and you got hit in the face. Yeah, so they just used to call me penalty because mm. sometimes we, you know, sometimes when you don't play football, you just have the penalty kickouts yeah. mm. just for fun. Shoot, shoot so I used to be the goalie for that. Okay. So friends used to call me penalty, and so, so all, all the goals went in. Surprisingly, no. <laughs> oh, you, you, you understand you the context. Think. You understand the context of how we used to mm. play futsal back in Lungzamba because we didn't have a goalpost. We had mm. the basketball ring, and mm. then there was like a division between the two posts. 
And that was a good host. So and that's one, hardly much of a division. A, a nice teenage boy can easily fit there. Doesn't have to put much effort, just have to stand there while the ball's being hurled mm. at him. No, but like talking about these weird nicknames you give, um, I my cousin told me about this conversation he overheard at this one of those, um, you know, not very well-known bars, like mm. those hole-in-the-wall bar, mm. hole bars. Hole-in-the-wall? Sorry, hole-in-the-wall bars. Hole-in-the-wall over here. <laughs> I think you would be, you would be fine. <laughs> so, um, hole-in-the-wall gang. Yeah. And then, he was drinking okay. and then he overheard this other guy having a conversation. Okay. And I think this guy was like, this is like back during gang culture, mm-hmm. like way back when. Mm-hmm. And then I think that time mobiles had just started coming out in Thimpu mm-hmm. as well. And then some dudes just ran into the bar and then they went up to this guy and he was like, boss, who are you Miss Kolzotanga. Miss Kolzotanga. Miss Kolzotanga. Miss Kolzotanga. And then I guess my brother's funny. It's so funny because the guy, the parent boss, he said, mm. Miss Kol me unreachable Zotna. <laughs> so now I am so cons- I'm cons- still confused. What I don't know what they intended to do to this. Is it off him or so where's the nickname? No, not the nickname, sorry. <laughs> the, the analogies that we yeah. made that Bhutanese were using. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, but then we also, what, what were the names of gangs back then? Ah, uh, there's so many gangs. Yeah, we were MB called the Taksang Gang. Taksang Gang. Well, you were Taksang Gang. Well, thanks to, why, thanks to Kinsel. That, well, was you guys well, unofficially called Taksang Gang? Yeah, youngsters hanging out together. Was it an unofficial yeah. term or was it you guys called yourself? No, no, we didn't call ourselves. Quinsel. Oh, that's nice. Because friends used to get into brawls. Mm. So I think they did a story mm. where we got the Taksang Gang. <laughs> Nothing gangsterish there, but how many of of you members were there? Yeah, quite a lot. Was our Rajesh in that night? No, 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 Rajesh. No, I met him much later. Uh-huh. Now those days we were in our teens. What was the what was the what do you call the goals of this gang? Just to cause ruckus. To get through the day, <laughs> <laughs> hang out, play some guitar. Mm. Not, not so. Oh, and maybe once in a while go guitar. hunting, fishing. You recently went fishing, didn't you? It's a club. It's, it's, yeah, it's a club. It's not a gang, it was a club. It was more of an excuse to go outdoors there, to go to the riverside. Mm. <laughs> Actually, I fish for five minutes and then I sit on the banks for like <laughs> 15 minutes. Pondering the, yeah. pondering the... Life decisions. Yeah, <laughs> pondering, the, pondering yeah. the answers to life. 42. Yeah, which, of which there are none. Well, yeah. there is one. It's, it's 42. If you go according to oh, Hitchhiker's no. Guide to the Galaxy, 42. the answer to life 40, is 42. 42. The answer to life is 42. So right? in a book... Yeah, I'm going to be 49. <laughs> so, <laughs> you've already found your answer yeah. five years ago. No. <laughs> so tell us what, what's the significance. There is no significance. Um, so uh, the There's book no. is... Uh, it's, absurd it's comedy. Absurd comedy. Yeah, so I saw the movie. Yeah. Yes, yeah. me too. I was talking to you. I watched yeah. the movie. I didn't know the book. So was, yeah, they create this supercomputer, which is supposed to know the answers to everything in the galaxy. And then they yeah. ask the computer, they say, what is the answer to life? And then the computer is like, that is a difficult question. Come after so and so years mm-hmm. and I will tell you the answer. I need time to compute. So many years later, they all show up and now it's like a great event. You know, like they're like, there's like the red carpet treatment. Spectacle. It's a spectacle. Mm-hmm. And then these people have aged a little bit and then they mm-hmm. go up and they're like, Many years ago, we asked you the question, what is the answer to life? Mm. And then the computer goes, yes. And I've spent the last few years computing and the answer is 42. Mm. And they're like, what does that mean? And the, she said, the computer's like, yeah, I think it's about 42. Carry the two plus this. Yeah, it's 42. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Nobody knows what the answer to life yeah. is and what the significance of it is. And uh, the weird Instagram question, what is the meaning of life? So that is the answer, 42. So mm. whoever asked that question. <laughs> So did mm. you get vaccinated though? Yeah, I got my... No Moderna. side effects? Oh, woozy doozy for about an hour or two. But that's because I didn't sleep the night. What, okay, you Just like today also, I haven't slept. Well, see, we, we dragged the man out of bed. Or, yes, sorry, right. not out yeah. of bed. Before he could get into bed. bed would be the correct term. Yeah. yeah, but then I slept the whole afternoon. So when I woke, I was fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about you guys? Yeah, I felt a lot of... Not wooziness next to the arm got a little stiff, a little mm. swollen, and then a little tired, mild tiredness. What about you, Kili? You got fit? You got I had fatigue. sore arm, and then I had slight fatigue, um, heard voices. <laughs> um, heard voices? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and for some reason, they all told me to murder my wife, so. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to do that. But apart from that, everything was fine. Yeah, everything yeah. was just fine, yeah. Just mild. I, I ate well. And the Which one did you guys take? More than a. More than a. 
I think Kinder took a little bit of the schizophrenic dose. <laughs> It's kind of funny because um, when we, we 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 went to our vaccination site, um, so they're making you all like sit in lines. That's right. Uh, Jimmy Nam Gil School. Mm. So they're all making you sit in lines and we're just sitting and then the line in front of us, like there are three rows right in front okay. of us. So then the, the, the frontmost row stands up and they all walk in line. Mm. Okay. And then the next lo- row stands up, goes up thing. And then I was just telling Tenzin, I was saying, if you're in a dystopic future, That's an execution right there. <laughs> Make it look like an execution is going to happen. It's just like everyone stands, goes front, and then the line in front just stands and like walks off mm. and you don't see any of them again. Welcome to Pyongyang Vaccination Center. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brought- What was the question there? Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah, they ask you. you know, whenever they ask me the question, I try to joke with them, but they don't mm. take them. Like one of them asked me, they said, oh, which is serious. No, they were like, uh, Did you pee blood? <laughs> no, no. One of them said, like, um, have you had any organ transplants in the last few months? And I was like, none that I know of. <laughs> and then they're just like, mm. and I was like, damn it, laugh, damn it. <laughs> like, tough crowd, like, tough crowd. Uh, Do you drink uh, to give occasionally? <laughs> <laughs> no, they asked me then, they're like, chap chujay ga. And I'm like, no, oh wait, I had chunky last night. <laughs> and then they were like, no, that's not really considered chap chujay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> But they asked me, I said, yeah, I drink on the weekends. They've seen that they have a lot of alcoholics who are withdrawal. So mm. if they want to withdraw or something, the vaccination, they don't recommend something like that. Mentioning it. Mm. But then like, did, didn't you tell me that you drank right after you got the vaccination? No, no, no. So no, there was... Not right after. Oh, okay. Three hours later. Okay. <laughs> Relatively right after. <laughs> But no, I, I think is, there, is there any like effects with that? Alcohol affecting with the vaccine? Do what? Funnily enough, after I drink, I felt better. Mm. Mm. Listen, boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. We definitely... Okay, fine. <laughs> They are like, um, you know, uh, so you've actually... Um, we're going to talk a little bit about your... Uh, we'll delve a little bit into your... Writing career. Writing mm. career. Mm. If you can call it a career, but... Uh, Any notable really. works? Oh. Uh, not really. That's up to the people. Mm. Well, I was written two books, published two yeah. so far. Um, Ballad of a Major, was it Major Man? Minor Man. Ballad of a Minor Man in a Major Chord, mm-hmm. which is a collection of poems. Okay. And post- post-mortem. Yeah, from which you did a song. Yes. We, uh, but it's not about me, it's about you. So, <laughs> and you also published Postmortem, which yeah. is a collection of essays. Yeah. Postmortem, why did I that term book? Yeah, it's like dissecting, no? Because mm. when you're writing, it's all in the past. Ah. So, yeah. And I will also you call it. <laughs> so what's the process like for the right for your writing? I know that's probably a very stupid question to ask, but then uh, the process. Oh man, what's the process there? I guess you go through whatever it is you're going through, mm-hmm. and you and then you try and find a moment for yourself, mm-hmm. and then you type some words, and then you revisit it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> <laughs> how did you come to uh, becoming a writer? Was it always your interest or was it just... Uh, yeah, came probably like, I'm good at started this. with comics when I was a boy growing up in Penciling. Mm. Okay. You know all the comics we used okay. to get? I'm a Chitra Katha and I, DC Tinkle. Comics, Tinkle Actually, Comics. Actually, I used to right? do a lot of Tinkle. Yeah, so I enjoyed those. Mm. Mm. So you said, I might, might as well try. Yeah, so try. maybe a love of reading started. Mm. Mm. So that obviously leads you to writing too. Okay. Yeah. We're going to put up a picture of Tinkle right now for our viewers who probably don't know what Tinkle <laughs> comic is. Giving Jamek some... Yeah. Something to write, yeah. Write, write, write on his notepad. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know what's funny about Tinkle? What? The word Tinkle also means to take a piss. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm going to take a Tinkle. So now you're like, ah. I love Tinkle. I had like this what much... What was your favorite? I have this much chakma. What, what stories were your favorite in Tinkle? Like, I used to love Tantri. The I love Tantri the Mantri. Yeah, Tantri the Mantri. Shikari Shambhu was good also. Yeah, Shikari Shambhu. Uh, of Sabu, Sabu. 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 Sabu the giant. Oh, wasn't that Chacha Chacha? Oh, Chacha Chacha. That's, Chacha. That's like a completely different... Comic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then there was... Uh, there's the... Kalia the crow. I think that was Kalia yeah, or yeah, Kalia. Yeah. Kalia. Kalia. Then Kalia there's the crow. Kapish the monkey. Yeah. Then, then there's a lot of folk tales. I love folk tales. I love there folk were some nice ones there too. A lot of folk tales. I love folk tales. Well, Amar Chitra a lot of Hindu stories, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah. But not good, good, like, folk tales. I mean, it's a good foundation. Mm. To start off, mm. you know, I love for, you know, words, the page. And, I, and the more you read, obviously, the more you learn, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you've got a knack for writing, maybe it helps you out. So for me, that was the case. 
I I recently revisited some of the because we were not recently but about a few years ago I came across some of my old Tinker comics all mm. torn yellow pages. Realized then that stuck to each other. Uh, no 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 no. <laughs> that that's my hustler and play boy uh, stuff. Oh, shit. <laughs> Link I wasn't that. jacking it to Kapish yeah. the monkey. Jeez. Oh, Supande. Oh, you <laughs> no. That so forehead. Oh. <laughs> so I was I was looking them up, and though I still think that uh, a lot. Where do you get hustler magazines? You know, you. Yeah, you just the imagination. Yeah. No. Navy Playboy is eh? the hustler. No, eh? Readers Digest. I've never read. Did you? Did you? Pornographic magazine my whole life. I've never seen it. Also, hmm. um, when we were in high school, there was an Indian man called Femina. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah models though. It wasn't pornographic. Hey, you, you. It, it was you, very suggestive. Yeah, very suggestive. <laughs> you use what you got. Yeah. I used to read yeah. the girls' blog about how to please the men. I used to get a hard on. <laughs> How old were you? Like, like, like 15 there. <laughs> okay. Seems about that. Uh, I didn't know uh, the stock is going uh, over the line. All right. Okay. okay. Anyways, we're, 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 no, that's what, like I said, we, 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 we tend to go into these weird, like... Yeah, good. I was trying to behave. Don't. That's why I'm like, <laughs> like I'm so used yeah. to Al Talima not being behaved as when we yeah, converse. That's why that. so I'm like looking at yeah, him. Yeah, it's all a lack of sleep. Oh, no, probably that. I would like, I would, this is how the conversation Coffee is not helping, actually. <laughs> so conversation goes to get in one time, man, though. If it goes in one time, man, and it branches to another place, we don't go back necessarily yeah, back to see your tattoos. It's like that. He's he's the walking talking brand ambassador yeah, for yeah. Samu now because he's got like oh, a oh. tattoo of a cloud on his arm. Mm-hmm. So I mean, Otaliman's got a few good ones too. Oh, I have. I'm inked, man. Well, in both. But terms, now it doesn't mean nothing. Mm. Another times more you want to get. Job. You just want the pain. <laughs> <laughs> the prick. <laughs> I just like it, like yeah. the look. Tattoos, yeah. not mostly about the pain. It just feels like expression, no mm-hmm. personality. I I sort of made sure to get tattoos on places that no one would ever see them. I did it on the opposite. Oh, jeez, why would you do that? No, the reason being that I've always felt that a tattoo's impact comes more when people don't see it, and then you actually show it after a very long time, mm-hmm. rather than having it where it's visible. But now I feel not having tattoos is the new tattoo. Why? Yeah, it's true. become so commonplace. Mm. Before it's been like rebel yeah. and yeah. And, and quite a lot of the tattoos, they look quite perfect. Mm. Now you it know, is. It's like a sticker, no? You stick it on your thing. And you so you like the beauty. Yeah, you got to have a little, yeah, it's got to be a bit. Imperfect. Yeah. yeah. It's all cover-ups, actually. I had all shitty tattoos before. This was a cover-up. What does that say? This is my Did you, when you were in school, did you all do that? It's um, all in. Oh, so there's no side there. There's no side there. I should get side now. I'm, I'm a narcissist, so I should get it. Now. Did, did y'all do that thing in school where, um, you know, uh, um, basically a poor man's tattoo? You are, yeah, you yeah. take like oh, a, yeah. you take like a hop, you take a needle and you just like you take shine. you take the compass this, this oh, you tattoo. get the ink yeah. you dip the compass in the ink, ink and, and then you just yourself. Like, I did with like a cactus uh, this is cactus step too. Shimi Rigson used to do and it. And then you be feeling that I'm cool there, no? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that all on the pish. Oh, yeah. but I have to be like I remember the first time that I did that my friend Shimi Rigson did it for me and he used the cup lagi yeah. and then the first thing he does is he's like. This is the best part. Uh, this is mm-hmm. amateur tattoo, but sanitation at its best. He takes oh, out the right. lager and then he goes, we need to sterilize this. And then he takes out a light, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. burns it. <laughs> yeah. and that, then, that's effective. Yeah, yeah effective. and then puts ink on my hand and then he says, what do you want? And me, my 14-year-old self, I wanted the initials of the girl I was dating then. Of course. Uh, like, everyone does. <laughs> and then he was just, yeah. Chimi Nixon just gives me this. Like this very just, dirt, like angry look. And then he's like, oh, fine. <laughs> he's just like, And then the whole time I was just there, like smashing the table with one hand while my other hand's like getting. Where was I living in this situation? Oh, it was during free free period. Yeah, free period. Yeah. So we so had where, to get. Where's the tattoo there? Oh no, it's, it's, it's no longer there. No, I don't think he did a very good job. Yeah, he did a shitty job. It's not permanent. There. Well, as this was one, so you can look clearly. No, under that. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, you have to stick it to your no, face. No, it's okay. <laughs> Bug off. Do you have on your chest, back, and all? No, no. I want to get. I have. I want to mm. think about it. Oh, your shoulder. No, no. I have two on my back, things. one on my shoulder, and one on my calf. You do? Yes. I've never seen it. Show the shoulder one. This is the one on my shoulder. It says, oh. I love you, mom. Let's see. They will listen. The red rose. Oh, nice. With the micro- eyeball. old microphone. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And then on my back, I have my mother's name in Zonka. Yeah, see? No, you can't see it now. <laughs> Jeez. I didn't see your back tattoo. For your, yeah, for only fans. Oh, oh, that's not a huge one. Yeah. Yes, and, and then over here, I've got a Lamb of God album cover logo. 
Now nah, the audience, oh. audience members will be curious now. You strip for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can visit my OnlyFans to see all my tattoos and much more. Lamb of God is that band, no? You listen to? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually wearing the shirt. What right do you now. like them? I don't like. I think I've sort of said this story to a lot of people to the point that now the story has kind of become boring for me. But true. when when I was in the twelfth grade, I went to Calcutta for my holidays for summer yeah. vacation, yeah. and then like uh, while I was there, I also went to get my eyes checked. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know, maybe it's because I was like still like I was a teenager and I was still very hopeful. Yeah. So I go to the eye doctor and then I was hoping for some good news. Or and then the eye doctor, the, the, the ophthalmologist, mm-hmm. ophthalmologist mm-hmm. is like. Oh no, there's no, there's no change. You know, your vis- your vision's getting worse. If anything, mm-hmm. it's going to get worse. Uh, you might want to prepare yourself because mm-hmm. it's deteriorating faster than we expected. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, uh. and then that just like bummed me out. Mm-hmm. And then I was sitting in my room in my uncle's house, and then I don't think I would have committed suicide, but I mm-hmm. just these lot of dark thoughts were like going on in my head. I was getting angry. I was getting angry at the doctor. I was getting angry at myself, and I was. Mm-hmm. I wanted to self-loathing. Yeah, there was like a lot of self-loathing and I wanted to hurt someone at the same time I wanted to hurt myself. And then it just so happened that that day after uh, after I'd gone to the doctor's trip my cousin and had taken me to one of the malls and Lamb of God had just released their newest mm. album, mm. Uh, Wrath. This was back in 2010, 2000, yeah, 2009, mm. 2010. So I took this album and then I put it in and then I just like saw the track list and then I just mm. saw the song called Broken Hands. Mm. And I just clicked it, and then the first line that comes out is like "bled off all you had to lose," and I was just listening to that bled, off? bled of all you all had to you lose." Had to lose and then there was this line in that song that's like, um, uh, "We are all going through hell. It's burn or keep on walking." Mm. So burn or keep on walking. Mm. Then I don't know. Maybe like that song sort of like really, it really resonated. Are they a young band or? They're quite old. They they like oh. formed back in the 1990s. They recently oh. released one of their most recent oh. album. They recently released a new album rather, oh. and that that song and then that album sort of like really kicked me out of mm. that funk that I was going through. And then that's why I got that album's logo tattooed on my shoulder mm. when I was in college. Uh, that's a, that's that's that's, be- that's a beautiful story, man. It's like. It's you know, a story that's been beaten to death yeah, at this point. I like that story. Oh, because, I see that. Here you go. Oh. We'll have to take pictures okay. of these and put it up on the Chinese green character. screen. I like how like people have this conception that you know this this kind of music is very dark and you know like kind of like, uh, violent. But in uh, in, the, in your case, it's so like it's such a like a. No, I no, think good music is good music, no? Yeah, no, no, but all I think uh, genres and all they're just created by I guess to no pump up the market or the interest or whatever. But I think um, when I listen to music, any good music is good music. Yeah, that's true. You know, and whether it's country or rap. Or I'm 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 coming in as a person who was like a full-on metalhead elitist. Like I was like, only metal's great. But now, as I've gotten older, it's been like really yeah. couldn't bother anymore. Like I don't need to please anyone. Like yeah. if I don't like this music, I don't like it. Mm. If I like this music and you guys don't think I should be liking this music, yeah, fuck off. You know, like I mm. I enjoy this sort of stuff now. Mm. And but at the same time, like you said, you know, um, that people think that it's dark yeah. and thing. Mm. It really depends on your perspective again. If you're going mm. looking for something dark, you're going to find that it's going to be mm. dark. Your interpretation. Yeah, your interpretation. Mm. Um, so yeah. here's something that happened back in the 1980s. So, so in America, mm. a group of congressmen's wives mm-hmm. formed the PMRC, which is called the Parents Music Resource Center, and they wanted to sort of like. But you know that explicit logo that you see on album covers now? Mm. Like, this is not meant for children. Oh. So they wanted to put that on covers and they sort of like put up this list of bands who they thought were detrimental to American civilization. And, mm. you know, the... the yeah. So then they called over this band, the band, the singer for the band Twisted Sister. Mm. That's, that's a... And then, <laughs> yeah, he comes into Congress dressed up in like his metal getup, like he's got a jean pant, like torn sleeveless jeans, mm. big hair, mm. comes out, takes out a piece of paper from his pocket. And everyone thinks that he's probably going to fuck up. And then he just goes off on this like really like tirade. amazing tirade. <laughs> mm. And then at the end, he's just like, if you're going to look for BDSM and bondage in this music, you're going to find it. Mm. Even if we don't put it there, yeah. you will find it. Yeah. So he says, it's all subjective. It's all interpretation yeah. at the end of the day. Right. It's a really good, it's, it's an interesting video. And I think about. as you get older, your music also evolves, no? Yes. You know, mm. the same music, Sunny sounds a little more different. Mm. And probably you're more open. 
Yeah. yeah. Never got into rap though. That's the weirdest thing for me. It's, poet, it's poetry. No, it is poetry. I'm, I'm not going I like to it. Notice. I like the energy. Yeah. 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 You can do that. You can Same thing with him. I don't know. I'm not a metal chap, but the energy. There's a lot of like, there's, there's, there's this app called our Genius. It was called Rap Genius. So they, they deconstruct lyrics. So when mm. you when the people say like lyrics like there's recently a song called uh, His and Hers okay so basically the song the guy keeps saying Tuli in our Birkin I was like what the hell does that mean so I researched it so Tuli is a slang for a gun mm. okay mm. and a Birkin is a very expensive bag so he's saying he's implying that he's rich and he's also a gangster so he's a Tuli in the Birkin but it's also mm. euphemism for sex because a t- Tuli is a, can be perceived as a penis and a Birkin is a bag of vagina well a vagina See? is called yeah, the, poetry uh, the yeah. purse. it's called okay. a satchel as well. So mm. that's what I like about like lyrics in rap music, sort of like uh, mm. like kind of this kind of mm. metaphors and stuff like that. Although Keith Richards did famously say, "Yeah, they say a lot and they don't say anything." <laughs> <laughs> I think Keith Richards is one of those um, highly opinionated yeah, he guitarists. Is. We're gonna read his book, Life. Oh, he has a book. Yeah, he, he good... got some literary award for it. He's a very good writer. He's the guitarist for Rolling Stone. Yeah. The really old and dude. he gives his vocal list a lot of hell. <laughs> Mick of Jagger. Course. I think uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards are one of those the power, twins. Yeah, they're one of those power couples that they work so they're well like together. And McCartney. Yeah. yeah, but then they can't stand each other at some point. Yeah. But they work so interest, well. They're different like views. They're brothers who love and hate each other. Yeah, uh, it's more like they don't. I think they don't see the, eye to eye. Yeah, eyes imagine all the success they've had and all the adventures they've had since they were teens, right? Yeah. And now they're in the seventies. <laughs> rock star yeah, that's a so Keith Richards is known for like because he lived this super like rock his life. Lock, rock star life like this guy is known for oh. done doing so much drugs but nothing like Lemmy eh? <laughs> nothing like Lemmy and we're gonna get to that yeah. but like Keith Richards did so much drugs okay that, but he's still alive yeah, a he's... lot of his contemporaries are hey money helps yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you to get a blood transfusion <laughs> so yeah. So this is, and he's still alive. So many people actually asked him, you know, like, how do you, you steal that? You, do you know what he said? What? He said he was never cheap with his drugs. Oh. He never bought the I cheap drugs. The good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> good shit, he said, it? I spent like a lot of money to get like really good drugs. So yeah, that's why I'm alive. Have the money it makes sense more. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, not like those. If you're a cooking yeah. addict, this beer, don't be a cheap cooking addict. That's what it means. Yeah, real life. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. It's all there. Does it have an audio? Okay, I have to do audio books. I'm sure it's got audio too. The rock star life. Oh, speaking of Lemmy, the first time I met Al Taliman was um I was talking with Al Soli on Facebook, okay, Mm. and then I see Soli's Facebook status, and then I see Al Taliman has commented, and then Al Taliman was wearing his iconic cowboy hat. Mm. Sorry, (laughs) that fedora of yours. Fedora. Was it a cowboy hat? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's something. And then I just wrote. I was like, I just commented there. I was like. Solly, who's that? He looks like Lemmy. And then, for those of you who don't know, Lemmy right now. Kill Mister. Lemmy Kill Mister, the singer for Motorhead. Motorhead, which is thing for speed, right? Yes. It's, it I is think so it's, much speed. His head was just, the motor in his head mm-hmm. was running. He did a lot. And he was, this is how, like, he did a lot of drugs as well. And he used to drink one bottle of Jack Daniels a day. With, yeah, with Coke. With Coke. How long did I live? Coca Cola. 72. Not Coke, but Coca Cola. Oh, Coca Cola. Oh, so. Yes, with Coca Cola. And you watch any documentary of his, and he's like one of the most chill people. He's just like sitting yeah. there and he's like, yeah. he's like opening up a bottle of Jack Daniels. And, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's got that typical. You never got into the trap of the celebrity thing, no? No. Start how, how long did he. Is, is he alive? He's he recently died. passed away. Like, how, how old? He was had. He? 70, 16 or 17. Yeah. I think it was 72, 74. So, okay, so you can live with alcoholism. So, this is, if you can take <laughs> this anything from not... this episode, alcoholism <laughs> being taking Coke, as long as you take the Coca Cola. Coca Cola, not Coke. Coke. <laughs> no, but then here's the thing, okay? So, when, when Lemmy gets really sick, mm. like he's been drinking Jack Daniels, one bottle of Jack Daniels every day, mm. and then the doctors tell him, you need to stop. Do you know what he does? He starts drinking vodka every day. <laughs> He tells, and then everyone's like, "Why?" Are you then he says, "Oh no, vodka is the healthier substitute yeah. for." I and forgot, was it vodka or wine? But he basically never stopped drinking alcohol. And, and, and he's also a very, very gentle chap, no? Extremely. Contrary to the image portrayed, mm-hmm. 
And he used to love collecting Nazi memorabilia. You know, there's yeah. one acoustic Nazi song. Nazi memorabilia? Yes. Yeah, he used to love. He was a historian. Oh. He used to he love. He was a history buff. Yeah. Like in his house, there's literally yeah. like a lot of Nazi. So that's why he many people think that. He was a Second World War yeah. or Civil War buff. Many people thought that he was actually a Nazi sympathizer. Hmm. But much like Aut Aliman, who's not a Nazi sympathizer, but <laughs> much like Aut Aliman, Lemmy was the kind of guy who really didn't give two fucks what anyone thought. Mm. So like, you, he would actually go out into town wearing Nazi memorabilia and not yeah. give two fucks. That's, That's Lemmy doing I Ain't No Nice Guy on a hollow guitar. We could get yeah. copyright struck yeah, for this. Yeah, we, we, like. we can get copyright struck for this. He's that man. And he'll like it. Yeah, oh. Yeah, I have to pause so sadly because YouTube yeah. will take this down. YouTube will, will YouTube not will let us play oh, really? this. Yeah. YouTube, if, it's, if, if you play any music which is not, we don't get the copyright. We'll take edit it, it out. We'll let, we cannot edit it out because we only have one microphone. <laughs> no, oh. no we'll, we'll just like pause it while okay, oh, I'll, 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 we'll research. I think YouTube already know who, who he is. I'll research it. And if you guys want to research about who this guy uh, is. Motorhead. Motorhead. You research I think anyone who's like really into the metal genre would know what who more Motorhead is. Here's a funny thought that I had recently. Um, you know, when you carry babies, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you're holding babies. How did we segue from no, motorhead to I'm, carrying babies? No, this is how we segue. <laughs> so have you ever realized that when you're holding a baby, to that baby, you are God? Like at yeah, any obviously. moment, you can snuff that baby's life. Okay. He's helpless there, but that, not, that brings uh, out the parental instinct. Yes, that's not true. No. So nature has there, intended, okay. you know. That's why well. even tough guys, they once once they have their first born, they go soft. Mm. No, but no, that's what I was. I think Autari Man sort of caught what I was trying to like. You know that for a fact that you're holding this little fragile thing, mm. right? Yeah. And like you can end its life whenever you. All you have to do is one something. Yeah, little, but why would you even think of that? No, that these are just <laughs> weird thoughts that I have. <laughs> but then at the same time, like Autari Man said, whether or not you are a parent, something does yeah. kick in. Maybe to, other people's children. <laughs> not your own. <laughs> oh, are you a parent? Yeah. You're a parent. So maybe you can raise it because you're not parents ourselves. Mm. So we don't, we don't I've have got 13 nephews. Oh, one day when you guys Sorry. have your firstborn, you'll know. Eh? But you, <laughs> but you also excluded, huh? Mm. You know, from the birthing process. Yeah, that's because yeah. it's the mother, no? Mm-hmm. Goes through the. Some guys, the guys get left out. Eh? <laughs> but do you want to experience that? What? The pain of birth. Uh, birth of somebody. I was in the labor. With cat. Oh, no, experience it physically. I think what Kinley means. Oh, like like how will I ever experience that? The yeah. simulation <laughs> machines. Well, there are machines that actually simulate. Can simulate. No, but I don't want to. Yeah. But just you kick, kick, kicked in the balls ten times is good enough. You're a man. You're a man, dude. Yeah, true. That's that's that, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to go through a? Uh, well, you could get kicked in the balls ten times. That's yeah. that's there. In the ball ten times repeatedly, and then you like. Okay, oh, of course, you can you always have a sex change. Um, but you cannot give birth yeah. if you have sex change. Well, yeah. You, yeah. you know, you don't you even have to. No, you don't even yeah. have to. You don't even have to give uh, get a sex change. There has been um, men men getting pregnant has been done. If I if I'm not mistaken, I've read. I don't know if I'm misremembering, but I. Jamyang, have can, you read it. can you look it up? Can you look it up? A man getting pregnant. I have a fee. I do remember <coughs> reading something about. I'll it. try and look it up as well while you guys converse. Mm. Let me see if a man can get pregnant. Well, you can get pregnant with an yeah, idea. Was joking about can this, men bro. get pregnant? If Federer wants to win 21 slams, but they're all tied on 20 each, right? Joko, yeah. mm-hmm. not all Federer. It's only Nisha, you can come back. Not as Federer, but as a woman. <laughs> 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 right? Win another couple of slams, you know? Oh, dear. You know, there's one, uh, speaking of transgender, there's one athlete from England, I think. Mm. So he was born male and he recently trans- he transitioned to a female, like, Three years later, mm-hmm. and so he's really big. He's like 250 pounds and he's a weightlifter. Now he's been given permission to compete in the Olympics in the females division. Mm-hmm. In the females division. And then people have saying that. Yes, I don't agree. I think they should just have an Olympics for the ones who are. Transgender. Yeah, whatever, right? Like just their own separate. Yeah, they yeah it's sort of. It's, it's sort one of. for all the ones with man becoming woman, woman becoming man, you know, or the one who wants to be both. Uh-huh. Then you can have another one, the doping Olympics. <laughs> No. You, that's what I want to say. The, those, <laughs> seriously, I want see them. who runs fast. Yeah, you'd only see the Russians. <laughs> you'd only see the Russians. No, in the, they, they're all cheating. They're the, 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 the peak of humans. 
Let them use yeah. all the drugs. No. I'm interested in saying, how fast can you go? How fast can a bull run? No, he's you know, just doped, doped out. Doped out. <laughs> you know. I mean, the guy already runs at 24 uh, miles per hour yeah. at his top speed. Yeah, so why not have a doping Olympics, gender Olympics? I mean, we already have Paralympics, which is people who are living yeah, with people, disabilities, yeah. which is their own thing. Yeah. Which makes sense, actually. But again, this is where we're being too politically correct, right? They mm. don't want to... They want to portray the impression that everything is normal, right? Mm. All these athletes. Oh, you don't hard. want to use the word normal, by the way. Oh God, no, that's sort of it, it, again that that's like normal sort of become the buzzword yeah, anyway, within the world. What is normal? Yeah. Normal. No, no, what is what normal? What is <laughs> default setting? I would like to use the word. <laughs> <laughs> What's the default setting? <laughs> There's one bar I go to a lot where transgender youngsters come there. Mm. Really, it's a child trans bar. Yeah, that's cool. A, Young Dubai, near Clock Tower. Mm. They, I, they're interesting, mm-hmm. but they also seem to, I don't know, I got the vibe that maybe they think we're already discriminating. Mm. When they're, coming in, it. they're coming in with yeah, the victim mentality. Yeah, you're just sitting there and they're sitting next to you, but you kind of get the... I think there's something to be said for like when, when, when you are being discriminated against mm. and then there are some people who come in, like you said... With with, with this idea that they are yeah, already yeah. like they've already created this narrative yeah. in their head that they are going to be discriminated against. So uh, so anything you do so actually they, they does become end up defensive being, ever. Yeah, yeah, and offensive too. <laughs> I think yeah. in that that's like um, it's like. Uh, but so, once you break the ice, then it's quite nice. Yeah, I think it's more important to get to know people and. Um, oh, once you break the ice, they even dance. <laughs> Some of them like dance. They don't ask for money afterwards. Do they? <laughs> I'm okay. That's but, why that's why it's good to be broke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to stress out financially. Yeah. Negative cash flow. Negative cash yeah. flow. Financially slow. Uh, what's the word? Disenfranchised. Nah, no, not financially, financially fucked. Yeah. Financially <laughs> <laughs> no, but then like um yeah like like this this entire this victim victimhood mentality. Yeah, it's, that, it's kind mean, of something that's. Uh, I'm not very, saying you should move. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you shouldn't discriminate, but they also should not come in with the, you do you know, with, the with a kind of mentality that, that oh, look at these guys, they're giving me the dirty looks. <laughs> and again, I feel that if somebody does give you a dirty look, at but the they end are of the a colorful day, company. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of them was <laughs> watching the arms. Yeah. I'm muscular. <laughs> I'm much bigger than mine. <laughs> I was thinking if I get into a fucker with her, no, no, she's gonna fuck, fuck you up. <laughs> Mm. But like, yeah, like um. So go, go, we, go to this bar. Okay? It's I just, know, it's I just opposite that. Foot Lover. Do you know Love. the only Putney structure house? Oh yeah, I know that. Yes, it's called KP Bar I, actually. I, the guy who runs the place. It's a KP. traditional one story. Yes, house. yeah. And his wife, she's the hostess. Mm. How's the? So you have to go. You enter right. There's all these tables and it's quite a co- the cozy there? atmosphere. I've, yeah, I've, I've jumped there before. And then you go to the back room. In the back room, that's where all the you know. What kind of groups of people come around? What kind of walks of... Uh, all types, yeah, but mostly youngsters. You know, I've never heard of this place. Mm. But these are good youngsters. Yeah. You know, but, not the, yeah. but it's like I was telling Sai, you know, um, on on episode three of SciPod, actually, when we were mm. talking, I said, you can't stop people who are going to be dicks from being dicks at the end of the day, right? True. So you sort of need to learn to also not... Respond. Not, not just respond, but also learn to like, toughen yourself yeah. towards these sort of things. Well, be humble, don't be a doormat. Yeah, you know. there we go. Be uh, humble, don't be a doormat. You know, quite often, we are a very polite society, right? Mm. But you're... Don't get pushed over. Yeah, maybe you're encouraging the wrong, you know, whatever. Mm. Mm. Okay, now to segue into something a little bit more... <laughs> no, you guys don't play music, what? We can't, we can copyright <laughs> still. We can copyright strike too. Oh, sure. <laughs> if this You've got a guitar you know. though, if you would like. I uh, have no state to play. <laughs> So I, will, I want to ask one question. I think that you were mentioning about growing up in the Takhsan gang. This, this yeah. So what what year was it when you were growing up in this kind of way? It's like 87, 88. 88. And how old were you then? Like teenage 17. Teenage, yeah. 18. So I always wondered, how was it growing up during that era? Because my parents, they were, they were really like, you know, hardworking kind of like, they weren't they had time to go out and you know, do things yeah, like it's fishing. Pretty straightforward. So how, how was like... Yeah. The life, you know, kind of like in terms of like a re- rebellious teenager. I guess it was simple, and at that age you're bored. Mm. So what would you Days do? are very long. Yeah. So you do, you know, you try and have fun wherever you can find it, and everyone's broke. Yeah. You so have to stress yeah, that. Yeah. So what we used to do is gather in a room. Mm. Someone will take out a guitar. 
you know, strum the two, three songs you know, sing along. This is like yeah, way, this is like way back when you had it to like learn exciting. songs by ear. Only excitement was going hunting and all, you know. You hunting. Know, yeah, you should go hunting to Ha and Punaka. What is hunt with you? Yeah, we had all uh, the friend. He had all these old guns. We'd go hunting for wild boars and all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's adventurous. Yeah. Old guns. I'm more interested in that now. <laughs> yeah, three no trees, Mausers. Mausers. Not bad. Want, then if you don't get a peg, you'll get a mountain goat. Yeah. And what, you'll they eat it? Yeah, so you bring it, po- you skin it, somebody will take the skin, the hide, someone will take the horns, mm. and then you cut the meat, right? I, I did eat bear meat once. Not, not, I ate also. We didn't, we didn't hunt it, no, of bear, course. Someone, it's illegal, by the way. Yeah, it's no. It's very illegal. But I was gifted by somebody. It was not hunted. Uh, it's all... Was it? It's very it's, rich. It's tough. For yes, me, it was did tough. Did you have any allergy? No, some people get allergies. Yeah, yeah. Some people, yeah, some, yeah your some. face swells. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. You're, you're supposed to really you have to thoroughly cook the meat because bear meat has something called trichinosis, which is mm. a type of bacteria. Mm. So you have to really cook the hell out of it mm. to make sure that that you kill off that bacteria. The, mm. the bear meat I ate was always like come, so it was like no shaka, but mm. very big. So it's a lot of fat content, a lot of muscle as well. Mm. So it really cook it like you said. I eat dog also. Huh? I, it's, dog it's, in, it's in India. I mean, like, friends or? yeah, like. How's dog? Not that. Like chicken. <laughs> not. No not. barking in the belly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, they do. Some of them do what we do with shakam. They pickle oh. it. Oh. So half the time, it's so, you know, there's so much um, other stuff added over it that you don't really know what the actual flavor is after a certain point. Mm. But how was it in terms of texture? It's, not I, not that different. It's to, it's it. Well, uh, what can you compare it more similarly to? Well, one thing I do know is that a lot well, of I guess in the uh, it's meat then. Yeah. yeah. So, how, so how one that? thing that's always sort of freak, uh, sort of annoyed me about a lot of people is they have no problems with eating beef and mutton, right? And then yeah. somebody eats dog, they're like, how can you do that? Because then I'm like, yeah, then like, by like, that logic, like, the like Hindus Mongolians, are, they eat horse, yeah. but for the Bhutanese is numb though. Yeah. But because that's because we don't have the horse culture. Yeah. Which they do. Yeah. yeah. So they eat. So I'm always like, the Hindus must be panicking when we eat beef because we're technically yeah. eating their god. Like, they, you know, so. Hey, on the quiet, they're also eating. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I do know a few. Just Hindus. like the Muslims eating pork. Oh, yeah. Right. Hey, pork is amazing. Mm. I love bacon. Like, like, love like, bacon. A, like, a, mm. like a good pakshapa. Yeah, who don't like bacon, man? Uh, <laughs> Islam <laughs> mm, depends. No, when Tenzin, yeah, but then when Tenzin was working, I think as soon as they go abroad, they eat. <laughs> yeah, but, maybe, but maybe not when they come home. Oh, but then one of the worst things that I had to experience was um, dining with hardcore vegetarians. Uh, mm. That's where the sketch idea came from. That's where my hatred for the Vegetarian. hardcore yeah, vegetarians yeah, came from. Painful, right? Because we go to a restaurant, and this has also happened to Tenzin. <sighs> mm-hmm. And then you go to a restaurant, and then it has to always be a Who's pure way. My wife. Oh. So she, she's they, they cannot no. cook, they cannot cook it in. The yes, that's ah, what. Nice she, like yeah. they go to restaurants, and then they make sure they have to go to an all veg restaurant. Mm. And even if they say no, they cook meat, but mm. they also have vegetarian options. They will still not eat. Like these are the hardcore ones uh, because they're like they could be using the oil that they I use. Know, and I, know, like that. I think that's taken to extremes. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I have food. friends who eat like vegetab- vegetables off the sides of dishes which have meat in them. Mm. And I think that's that's way more yeah, accommodating. I think, yeah, I think they should not be so extreme in there. Because, you know, even being a veg is a privilege, man. Mm. You know, if you if you don't have a choice, you'll eat whatever you need for sustenance. True. But true. when you have options, then you become a vegetarian. There's another one, no, a bit more extreme than being a vegan, vegetarian. Vegan. vegan. Where you don't eat anything from animals. Yeah, so don't no you think that's a privilege? To say, I don't want to eat meat. Because you because have I so can, many options. Yeah. yeah. So maybe. But are you, actually, I never that's, thought That's an that. angle they should think about, you know. So they, they shouldn't sure. necessarily yes. preach to people who are eating meat. Maybe that's what he got there, you know. It's not like he's got a choice. Yeah, I think like what I was saying. So let them that what they if you're thrust into a situation where you have, you don't Things have like the this, options. No, I always feel it's personal practice. Keep it to yourself. But soon, like as soon as you preach, preach, you become a burden, no? Mm. To all the others. Then that's why you also don't like vegetarians there, because 
we've 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 met all preachy kind of vegetarians. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of I I I love annoying. And then you know vegans. they'll share pictures of cows being slaughtered in factories. Oh. Now what are they doing? They're giving you a guilt complex. I just yeah. drool when I see those. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's just to piss off any vegans or vegetarians who are watching. Oh, I know what you, what you want to say about the, the cows in, in post periods. Oh, you must go. Yeah. yeah. I think I had one friend who post so much of these, you know, the slaughterhouse. I had to unfollow it. Couldn't yeah, take it yeah. anymore. Too much. No, no but what is he doing? Huh? He's actually giving uh, those who eat me the guilt, guilt trip. Guilt, guilt, guilt trip. What right has he got to do that? If he was an island and he ran out of rations, mm. what do you think he'll do? You think he'll shy away from eating the rabbit, the fish? You eat it, why? Right? Because the body needs sustenance, no? Mm-hmm. So, hence, you know, you shouldn't, you know, impose your dietary habits. Keep it to yourself. What about the religious Keep aspect? It, I have a friend, Mitra. He's vegetarian, but he mm-hmm. never imposes his vegetarianism yeah, on cool. us. In fact, he cooks for us meat and all. Is yeah, it good? Good. I, I, I think vegetarians who can who can be accommodating. But it's not just vegetarians. Okay, like this, yeah. Anybody who preaches, you know, that, whether it's you know whether it's vegetarianism, that's a good example. Then other things also, you know. Like just because you're older doesn't mean you know better right, when you preach to the young ones, right? Mm. Or you're you're on a spiritual path. Mm. Then again, what are you doing? You're you're telling the you know you shouldn't do this, you should you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I don't know. I have a problem. I actually enjoy. So it's gotten to a point where I've actually now started enjoying antagonizing anyone who starts <laughs> like. <laughs> preaching about vegetarianism and veganism to me and it got to a point where once um you got to get a whole chicken like <laughs> oh i i i i i what i did was there was this um there was a there was a vegan event somewhere mm. and mother. then somebody like they were offering me like vegan food mm. you know and then i was like oh i'm so sorry like you know um i don't really you know it's okay like I, mm. not that i didn't want it i just didn't have the money for it because it was expensive Like one jar was like 900 bucks like the oh, jar was like the other, other point I wanted to talk about was also just because you're a meat eater doesn't also mean you should ask for meat meat true no you that's know, like, I believe in that see you know most of the Russians no meat there's a holy city right mm. so you get used to eat the dal the you know be accommodating yeah so you eat mm. whatever's on the table mm. No I think that's true like again like you can't also be this hardcore like meat, yeah, it meat, both eat ways, meat yeah. every day you know like yeah, there's there's there are certain meat eaters right they can't do without it Uh, I know of you. <laughs> I used to be one of them. Don't get there's no meat on the menu. I I personally like to have a meal with some type of meat protein, no. but then mutton I can also like it's yeah, not a necessity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mutton all the better. But uh, well, the first thing is again sustenance mm, then comes the pleasure mm, of eating and all that. But then when I was to work out quite in your, what it calls strictly you need protein no you cannot find it in other vegetable yeah. kind of sources maybe you can but like you said it's more expensive is yeah. harder so you out of, out of you know convenience yeah. it's easier to eat yeah talking about food last night i didn't sleep because i was watching this uh, on netflix it's a show called street food uh, no 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 tokyo what is that uh, no tokyo. samurai gourmet Samurai Gold Man. Wow. Is this a sixty-year-old guy, right? He's retired. He's been a corporate man. He's all like. Is he a samurai? And then he, you know, he does the things he wanted to do, but he could not do when, when he was, he was working. Man. So his love is eating. So he goes, you know, all the alleyways in Tokyo. Mm. Then he tries the food, but the way he eats it, no, is <laughs> is very good. The art of eating. So in Japan, they have this flavor profile called umami, which is mm. like the, when you get the pleasure. And he's been in. He's been to Japan. Yeah, mm. I live in Japan for like mm. two and a half years. So this flavor profile called umami mm. is they put some certain things, but they can measure it. So once you taste it and you get that feeling of dopamine rushing to your body, like happiness, mm. that's the flavor they always look for. It's called umami. So they get high off their food. Technically, yeah. <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically, they're getting high off their food, but they're not in like a. It's better to get. What happened to your dining in the dark? Thank you for bringing that up because we are it. actually going to do a small event uh, in the coming week. Mm. Um, we don't want because we're still trying to maintain like COVID nineteen protocol. protocol, but at the same time we still want to uh, raise money and mm. try to do something what we can for the mm. people who live with disabilities. Cool. And actually, um, we've we've sort of recently we. We had this massive donation campaign. Some people from Switzerland, uh, sorry, Singapore, donated, and we managed to buy some essential uh, household items for one family in Jamgam. What is the the child is visually impaired, 
Okay. And we managed to get them like a lot of stuff for their house, which like things that they need. Mm-hmm. And I personally, we the system that we have in dining in the dark is we never give people money mm. because you never know what's going to happen with money. Like yeah. people will outright misuse it. It's and it's not that we don't trust them, but you don't want to tempt them. Yeah, we don't want to tempt yeah. them either. So instead, what we do is we tend to ask, like for example, the last dining in the dark we did, we asked Minsling School for a list of things that they wanted and then we ticked off what is possible and then based on that whatever money we made from our donations we sort of like we bought two braille typewriters and like mm. a dozen white canes each mm. each uh, measured to the length of the person who needs it mm. and then we sent that over i think that's way better than actually giving mm. money because then yes yeah. and also we sort of encourage our donors if they can't give money then like mm. like say like okay we can commit to like buying Yes. This uh, I think which is more yeah, better. Yeah. But then sometimes they also because it's such a hassle for them yeah, also. So, the so sometimes they just give us the money. money you guys use and it. then yeah, we have a separate account which we yeah. keep all the money stored up in and we only use that money to do the donation campaigns and stuff oh, like that. Mm. What was that? Well, how many time. dining in the dark did you do? Uh we did 3 on oh. the first one I think which one were you a part of? The second one. Yes. Sir. So how does it work? So uh yeah. the dining in the dark it's actually based on this gimmick restaurants called dialogue in the dark yeah i've heard of them yeah. yeah so it's like the idea of these uh restaurants abroad mm. is that you dine in pitch black darkness so you don't you don't judge any preconceptions yeah but then here's the thing the servers the waiters they're all visually impaired oh so cool so we can't obviously so you're do given that. a brief yeah. like a peep in over like the other like, you do yeah, yeah like if our vision wasn't that good yeah. You know the things you'd have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. You know you have to use the other senses, no? Yeah. Well, so we call guests. We have them blindfolded, yeah. and then we give them a three-course meal. We start with soups, <sighs> then the main course, and then if they want dessert, then then there's tea, coffee, all that stuff. But once they enter the restaurant, until the point that the event is over, they are not allowed to remove blindfolds. Mm. And we've actually had people who had panic attacks. Yeah. And we have to like. Uh, keep a separate room for yeah. them and then that's why you panic attacks because you're so used to certain because things you're, right? you're denied your visual which is the most important of you know senses yeah suddenly you're blind <laughs> yeah. you're disoriented i think a lot of people feel claustrophobic yeah. they they yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. they've been trapped like in this when, when i cannot space. like see like when I, in the middle oh wow of, how bad Look, look now, when I'm peeing in the, when I'm trying to go pee in the dark, middle of the night no my peeing biggest the concern is like I'll hit my head somewhere so I was like yeah. don't want to hit my head <laughs> that's you, the biggest you'll definitely hit your head in the food lover's <laughs> toilet the toilet oh yeah so in my English I demand you cocked out sound my yeah. god I'd, I'd pee like this <laughs> <laughs> no but then so we, we, we sort of did dining in the dark and mm. um, uh, we also started doing smaller events during dining like during the second dining in the dark we actually had somebody play we got the special football which mm. blind soccer players use mm. oh so oh, it makes nice gosh it's got a bell inside it oh. so then the funny thing was um the uh, one of our guests we, i told her i'm going to roll the ball towards you judging by your by the uh, hearing yeah. try to kick it mm. roll the ball she missed the ball when she mm. kicked her high heel flew off smacked <laughs> me in the face i am not making it up i was just like Bow! and then i was like well you hit something <laughs> and then the whole night she's just apologizing to so, you and you're so dining in the dark no brother mm. you use you use this um, event for awareness or do you also yeah. raise money we raise money and people participate yeah. they They can, give donations. they can give donations and we don't say like this is how much we want It's how many visually impaired people do we have in the country do you have any stats oh um i don't remember exactly a, 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 the last time i know when we were in kono yeah. you know when we were to cross calling uh-huh. you know calling this a school yeah minseling uh, but but it's the only one right yeah it's the only one yeah. and um so when i was working when i was interning at abs i was typing in some data like me like mm. recording the data that they had done over the mm. survey i remember <sighs> seeing about 200 cases more than 200 yeah. cases of visual impairment mm. from mm. the east alone mm. just from the east mm. and so i don't know this is like way and back what, in what's 2000. the cause mostly 
in that i don't know some of it seems to be hereditary mm. one of the weirder ones what is your, your folks my mine is hereditary like my condition is genetically genetically so you, your parents have a kind of visual disability. none of my parents are visually impaired they've got really good sight what about your my grandmother is a ama- my late grandmothers both could see very well so mm. So the hereditary means yeah, but then sometimes it can skip generations. Did you have a few like great grandparents who were like? No, not... we don't know because we haven't. We can't. <laughs> but so no, you were from birth you were like that. You had a yes. Yeah, so condition. the condition that I have actually though it's though it's so hard it's difficult to catch at a very young age hmm. because it only starts showing symptoms when you're in your teen years. Hmm. So by then it's too late. Yeah. Not that it's too late, yeah. but by then the condition has developed in the yeah. brain. It's like slowly developing. and then once it starts showing symptoms it's almost like you cannot be irreversible. when did you yeah. become aware of it that you so were I, was like, i was like 12 years old you yeah. like you really had to concentrate focus on something that yeah um my mom noticed that i was cockeyed mm. so like when i was talking to her every, like i think everyone still i still have it like no, you're not cockeyed I, i i didn't know you're cockeyed you're cockeyed or cockeyed sometimes some people find it no, because i'll be like talking to someone because you're also used to yeah, yeah. yeah. no but you're using your good eye remember mm. or rather you're trying to focus no uh, that's so why maybe, maybe that's it no the focus yeah. is but then like sometimes when i'll talk to people i'll be like so how are you and they'll just be like yeah me I'm like I yes you someone here yeah. yeah. so my mom started noticing that I had that yeah. and then we got checked and then I went to India and then that's what I was told and yeah mm. that I think I was like 11 12 years old when that happened yeah, but that time you didn't have any glasses or did you put glasses on you can't use glasses because mm. glasses don't help because mm. because the nature of the condition is that you'll get worse mm. yeah. so yeah, the power of your glasses so at the end you, there's a high chance you'll be wearing glasses yeah, no like lasik or on there any remedies no cuz mm. um it's a dna mutation mm. so because it's a dna mutation they say that even if you do do like laser mm. or transplant mm. because it's like it's like trying to build a house when the foundation is already shit mm. so no matter how many houses you build on it because the foundation is shit the good. house is going to collapse mm. but right now there's this um promising work in stem cell that's going on mm. i think a lot of stem cell stuff yeah you know. Because stem cells technically is like you're injecting cells into parts of the body, and then I think they so, they sort of take yeah. over the job. For example, um, if you give my example, so my condition is called Stargardt's macular degeneration, which causes degeneration of the macular cells which are in the eye, mm. right? So if you if stem cell were to become one hundred percent effective, mm. so they would inject stem cells into me, and then those stem cells really they cool. take the form of the cells which. you are lacking mm. which you are lacking yeah. so they would take the that's how yeah. i've understood it i don't know if that's the correct so, that's just how i understood so it with this research you've done you think you can experiment on yourself possibly no i don't want to why <laughs> the, have think, you come to terms with your ailment like, yeah i mean like, i've been living with it for like over mm. like, how old am i two decades yeah like nearly yeah, two decades you? <laughs> <laughs> like your yeah more than like about 17 years now so mm. Like, I think I asked yeah. before, but would you eventually lose all vision? It depends. Some people who have had this vision have have had this have gone completely blind, mm. whereas mm. some have gone what is like they just see blurry stuff. So right now, where are you right right now? Tunnel uh, vision or blurry? Uh, mine's more blurry. No. So yes. like I don't see the center of the thing. Mm. Center like, of what? Like so you know our vision has central vision, right? Yeah. So I don't see the center. Mm. So I see blurry centers. But you can see me. Still, I can see oh, your still is incredible. You can see our figure. Your type point three. Your type is points on his phone, <laughs> and then look at them this close. And then I send it out to edit it. <laughs> no, no. Oh yes, uh, speaking of editing, how how how's, how's editing work going on? I mean, that's that's yeah, your primary I, I source of one or two right? jobs, you know, uh-huh. for the pocket money. He's being naughty. but certainly not for the love of it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's oh that's how you you earn your bread and butter. Yeah, I'm a part-time employed chap. Is that a freelancer? Would you that be yeah, a better term? Freelancer well freelancing means you're jobless. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a nice way of saying freelancing. Mm. But yeah, but yeah, I do editing. I'm doing one called a love story. Is better it not, a book? Better not give it, it away. Poem? Yeah, it's a book written, He doesn't written by a friend. Okay. So yeah, I'm editing mean, jobs. No, no, no offense to any of our writers and artists, but I'm sort of done with the whole love thing in Bhutan now. 
What do you mean love thing? Yeah. Everything that we seem to write or do seems to revolve true. around love. Like move, music revolves around but love. But it's the most... No, it sells, it sells. Yeah. And I, I understand. A lot of them are not doing it necessarily yeah. because they, you know, love, love about it. But they know it sells them. Yeah. Listen to any Zongo song, there's always a boom there. <laughs> Followed by... Uh, or a guy. Yeah. Yeah. As a joke, I once wrote that, um, like in Indian classical, the notation you learn is yeah. Gama Pa Da Ni Sa. No? Yeah. And then in English, in America, in the West, it's Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> the one that I made for Bhutan is Ni Ta Shang Ache Luga. <laughs> that was the one I made for Bhutan. <laughs> But this is not it's just in Bhutan, it's everywhere, right? Yeah. Common denominator is, is love, the, which, which is, is the nice selling. Yeah. So you either love. decide to sell out, make your peace with it, mm. or you don't. Mm. Or you make a strike a compromise more. Mm. So you know, like you, you do a commercial movie, some actors do, you know, yeah. then with the money they make a they film after their own heart. Mm. So I guess. And then it's your choice. So where do you lie in that? For me, it's more like artistic. Can't. Expression. I'm trying not to sell out, but you have to think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to admit that I've written a love song, yeah. and no, but nothing yeah. wrong. With there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with writing. It's just like it's you, just don't, you don't want it to be too cheesy, watered down, me, yeah. cliche, yeah. cliche yeah. I guess you know because you look at the Beatles' early uh, albums; it's all love songs. Yeah, and then later on they did this really weird yeah. experimental uh, stuff. Yeah, but I think that was yeah. smart because what they did was they caught the audience by. Doing but songs. also like, at that age, what are you going to write? Oh, Your life experience is like uh, 19, 20, 21. Eh? So all you know is love. love. You know, so. no. Papa I love, think I have I to like, um, it's more like for me, it's like, you can write about love. It's just like, I'm getting so like, the Inundated. suffocated by yeah, it. Inundated by it. It's a tsunami. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got no chance of, you know, surviving. Like everywhere I turn, it's just like, yeah. Bra, like it's like, okay, like but you can always always yeah. change the station yeah true a dial. <laughs> like even nowadays when I'm like on my Facebook it's just like song song TikTok yeah. song TikTok like, yeah but that is okay, you, you've like, written some songs original ones <laughs> but not love songs as much mm-hmm. maybe yeah especially that mm-hmm. poem that you guys did it was nice enjoy it. well it's your writing I mean it's well but it's your melody it's your music Himal Himal uh, I think wh- whose idea was it? Was it's it Solly? Himal. It's Himal. Well, but song, Solly also played the UK the broken heart beautifully. We can actually play uh, that on. The yeah, we can because copy. copyright yeah. is here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> copyright is right here. What's the song about? So Autaliman had Himal. written it, and yeah. it's hmm? the title of the song is called Broken Heart. Yeah, and what's it about? Oh? It's about the broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about, it's about the, hearts that are broken. Well, we, hearts that you've yeah. broken or your heart that which has been broken multiple times. You can listen to it. I don't think we listen to the full thing though. Mm, no, yeah. no, I'll just show you though. But um, give us some context. So, my guitarist friend who's currently in Canada, Himal, yeah. he always does these weird like collaboration stuff, right? And he used to always do it with other singers. Mm. And when he said he wanted to do this, I sort of put my foot down and I was like, "Fuck it, you're not doing it with any other singer. Mm. Like mm. it's going to be me this time." Mm. So mm. then he sort of sent me the song. I listened yeah, to it. He gave me the melody. And then yeah, three years ago, Soli ba- It was called Babu. Babu. Yeah. Uh, but he shot no Soli Baba. Soli Baba did the video. Uh, Soli Baba played yeah. the ukulele. Oh, I love the uh, instrumental in it. Huh? Himal and then made you the shot the video in Nilly Waves back yes, then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The weird by yeah. Jimmy Taliban. Yeah. Tal- Talisman. But we pronounce it Taliban. What? The S is silent. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Django. Was the time it took to break the mold? It's beautifully shot, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's solid. I mean, sorry, it's, it's solid. Melodic. It's amazing when it comes to the show. Yeah, it's come out nice. We should try to get Solly on this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Solly's got an interesting yeah. life as well. The funny thing is when we were shooting this, I I was I was struggling to keep a straight face. Long 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 Thanks to the thanks to the fact that you guys made music out of it. This is the only poem I remember. <laughs> I don't remember my poems, you know. 
I did like the one. But once there's the a melody, you remember it. Well. No, yeah. it, it just plays in your head. I I remember the I I like the poem you wrote about Mojapa. Oh yeah. You had written about the faces and the lights. I I thought that was such a it's a nice it was a nice poem. How did you make the melody? So Himal played the guitar just and Himal realized. sort of gave me a rough melody mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. after I listened to that rough melody I was like we can tweak this here tweak mm-hmm. this there and then just like yeah that's Yeah you asked me if you could add night to night <laughs> yeah, I had to we had to like add certain lines because when you're singing I guess you need melody. a bit of a, mm. I don't know what you call it but So I did not know this oh, Thanks for doing it <laughs> I it. I think um at, after that didn't Ujjal also uh, the guy who yeah, plays the kahoon he wanted to do uh, I'm the man. Oh no, was it Ujjal? Yeah, it was Ujjal. Ujjal wanted to record I'm the man. One hour five minutes. He wanted to do a punk version, no? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not happening. It's <laughs> one of those you know I'll give that. He's threatening to do it, but it's not coming. <laughs> He's in Australia right no. now. So. Yeah. Oh, as a as As plus, is if anyone listening and wants to be an aspiring writer or people who enjoys writing, what do you tell them? Read a lot, mm. write. You revise. just lost. You just lost half. Don't be them. in a hurry to publish. You know, keep polishing it. What is the most rewarding thing about being a writer? Yeah, Apparently, it's not very. I know, guess you get things monetary. off your chest, you know, mm. because you're selling it on a page. Mm. So I guess after you're done, you do feel a bit lighter. I think one of the most difficult It's a self rewarding task just like anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like music. I think one of the most important and yet difficult things that you should do when you write something is you should give it to somebody to edit. Mm. And I think that's where you really have to put your pride and Oh guys own. don't revise yeah, much and all this. You should always like like whatever like most of the songs that I've written I've always given out mm. Aliman like Could yeah. you look it up? Where do you think? Like it's one of my good. favorite lines that Autaliman edited for my song Bomila Karma Yangzo mm. was that I had written. Um, she goes out into the field and something something. But then Autaliman had edited that and he had written sand castles in the wind. Mm. And yeah, I I, I loved that edit that yeah. he made to that because I had just sand written a very generic castles line. Castles in the wind. Because I I think I had written she adds another tower mm. to her castle. Yeah. And then Autaliman scratched that out, and he wrote, "Adds another tower to sand castles in the wind." Mm. And I thought that was oh, such that nice. <laughs> that's such a <laughs> nice line to edit. Sorry, and nice. then I kept that in. But visually hard to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but then that's what like I think it's really important to like be able to. Yeah, I think you you know, you've got to be honest, you know. Yeah. Writing, if you're not honest, because anyway you're bullshitting <laughs> here and there, so you've got to be honest. Otherwise, you fall into the trap of trying to impress people, right? Mm. So you use words you should not. Mm. So less is more is something goodness writers need to keep in mind. I so think a lot, lot yeah. of them use you know like words that are not required. Bombastic. The line is already complete, but they have to add another one. No, mm. so it, it so that betrays the fact that they're not mm. really thinking through. You know, because you should try and not waste any words. Mm. I mean, that's at least the approach I take. You might get the writing equivalent of Chinese democracy. Yes. Yeah. When I read my old stuff, I see all the mistakes. You know, shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this line wasn't necessary. Why did I add this thing here? But it's also a learning process, yeah. and you can only learn by practicing. Yes, mm-hmm. like anything, you know, yes, it's not yes. like you've got a natural talent inborn. No, you, you, unless you're you Beyonce, yeah, you keep at it. No, yes. and the more you do it, the better you become. Mm-hmm. And obviously, as you get older, you have life experiences. Mm-hmm. So I do believe, you know. Uh, you become a better writer when you're a bit older, mm. especially poetry, oh. with exceptions, of course. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, like you were saying, like um, the 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 thing to like one thing that I've always, not always, but I try to do is like when I'm writing lyrics, is that I will leave the lyrics alone for like a good month or two, mm. and then I'll come back to it again. Yeah, and then then that's when you're like. Mm, no, that's this, what I mean by seems, revision. This seems useless here. A lot of our guys do one draft and then they send it to you. So, mm. going back to your work is good. You chip away all the necessary, you know. The unfat, yeah, the fat, all the, the branches, unnecessary. You, know, you get rid of it until you try and get to the soul of it, right? Peel off all the layers. How does your writing process? How long does it take? Like if you want to write, let's say. Uh, yeah, mine is novel. sometimes it's just. I write at the spur of the moment. Mm. Also depends on how much coffee yeah. he's had that day. <laughs> yeah. 
No, like, I don't I'll know. Tell you, your books or whatever you've written yeah. so far. How long does it usually take? In your well, I didn't write the book with the, you yeah. know, intention, intention. of oh, writing a book. It's a collection of books. So I just used to write. Every day I try and write. Oh, okay. So in the end, yeah, friends are saying, why not put it together? But oh. I think there's a habit, no, mm-hmm. of write, scribbling, if you're a writer. Like Rajesh. Rajesh you know, doodles every day. Every day he paints. So look at his wool. He's getting better and better. No, it's now, now he's got a feathery, snowflakey touch. He's working yeah. on his craft. Yeah, I, I love his watercolors. You should, you should, watch, so, you should like. Follow and it's not because he's genius or is the what do they call it? The ten thousand hours. Ten thousand hours. Yeah. You put the time, no, and then you get better and better. The same thing with guitaring. Mm. Anything. I don't know, any any craft, I guess. Consistency. Yeah. If you put 10,000 hours. A lot of our guys, they wait for inspiration. Yeah. It's not going to come. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree with that. You, you got to keep at it. Because I also make my stupid videos. If, if, if we don't try to wait for inspiration, it doesn't come. You just have to like, write yeah, something. Yeah, then yes. it just expands into something. Then you're like, oh, okay, put it together. Not everything you do is going to be top notch, you know? Yes. So you also have to put up with the mediocrity. Yeah. You know, there's stuff I've written I'm not proud of. Mm. But that's also part and parcel of the journey, you know? You keep at it. Not every song he writes, is, is he going to be satisfied with it? No, I still have But he keeps at it and then he gets better. So I guess a certain discipline and, you know, mm. uh, self... Consistency. Yeah, yes. you got to have that. Because if you wait for Lady Luck to hover around your head, you, you know, time will pass by, man. Lady Luck comes, bangs and goes away. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, and that also like once in a few months. <laughs> in that order, it comes, bangs, and, and goes away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. On that note, do you want to end this or you want I to keep going for a bit? It's up to Otani. Why don't you like to keep talking? <laughs> okay, we, we can always keep talking. <laughs> it's just that for the sake of our editors, it's oh, a I, nightmare. I, I think the last thing that I'd like to share is Otaliman and I, we were, this was during um, this, we were talking about beauty pageants. Okay. Mm. And this is something that I. I find extremely funny because Autaliman said this and not because Autaliman said this, but it makes so much sense. So we were talking about beauty pageants, right? Mm. And then Autaliman was going off about how it's so insincere because, you know, you firstly, you're putting up women who not many people can reach, mm. you know, the standards okay. of. Mm. And then secondly, it's like whenever, whenever they win, mm. it's always like they're like, I thank, I oh, thank yeah. my this. And then, yeah. and then he said, the most genuine Thank, thank you speeches are given at porn awards because if you think about it I couldn't have done this without like the debut porn star gets this and the, and the speeches I honestly couldn't do this if it wasn't for my partner my partner his yeah. dick his <laughs> dick so oh, yeah. it, if you think about it, it does make sense. The yeah, most I, I genuine do think porn stars, you know, those in the adult industry, mm-hmm. there's a lot who suffer too because it's got a billion, whatever, you know, it's a money making machine. But it's quite a sincere profession, no? Yeah. Because the first honest. thing you do, you, you go to work, you take off your clothes, and then you. <laughs> you start fucking around the camera, yeah? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, I'm gonna suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then hey, you go home. Hey, and then you hug me. How was your day, honey? <laughs> I was like, oh, that asshole. Well, what do you mean, that guy? No, his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Tasted fancy. <laughs> but yeah, think about it. <laughs> and imagine the tens of millions of more horny youngsters they are satisfying their image. Yeah. <laughs> so there's oh, that, a lot of merit so giving. Is, what yeah. a giving. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's so sour. Yeah. Be a porn star. How many lives will make people happy more? Mm. Well, if, if you want to, if you want yeah. to. No, even if you don't want to, this is coming from me. Be a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> Now we know SI's uh, next job is going to be like next thing you know. No, the porn, be Sci- I feel it's Sci- like, Hub. Sci- Hub. Porn, the the whole major nascent but miss porn industry. Oh. Everyone watches it. I guess we can porn, call it porn wood. Porn wood. Porn wood. Imagine putting these setups now. Imagine putting these setups like, let's say, like, eh, hey, oh, Nani. I don't even know how to let's just, just like improvise. Imagine a Bhutanese like, setup for a porn. What would it be? There's probably be a phallus there at the background. In the order, I don't know. Oh, Chigi, Momo, na turu malante. Eh, well, looks like I'm going to have another Momo. <laughs> 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 I'm going to have a Madazi. Oh, last week we were discussing things. Actually, no longer the we're discussing Bhutanese porn parody names, no. Uh-huh. And then, no, 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 no
we had a one which is uh, six boys, one golden cup. Six boys, one golden cup. Did you, are you one, familiar with the term one. two two girls, one cup? What? No. no? <laughs> 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 then what? Then what, what? What? What kind of? What? What was there? Norla had said one again. Gasa Tamil singing. 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 What is that one? Yeah. Um, Sharing, sharing me to. Sharing me to. And I think on that note we can. No, that is one more. Oh, you can also give the check it, check it, charo through. Wait, laro, laro. Damn it! I was going to say that actually. You know, you're gonna say that. I was going to. Niki. <laughs> 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 oh god what is the other one uh, Norla had said something like Acha. shaving Ryan's private service. I look much up <gasps> I look much up <laughs> this incest porn dude oh god Shaw. Asha. <laughs> 69 days <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a that's a fuck with all <laughs> 69 alright we, we definitely losing that Try not to laugh challenge. <laughs> And with that, with a sufficient uh, group of our audience uh, probably scandalized, I think we should call it, call it, call it. Yeah, call it an afternoon. You know. Call it an afternoon for today's episode. Okay, Jesus. Hey. Oh, Compose yourself, man. 69. <laughs> Imagine Bardoya. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Which reminds me of that joke. Yeah, um, and even at the, um, like, um, these extremist you know islamic extremists mm. who blow themselves up no yeah. so the, and the yemen attack like, they are promised 72 virgins if yeah. they die for islam and blah 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 bang this is telling me they go up no it's all nerds in oh. heaven it's all male virgins like, <laughs> you never specified what the virgins would be <laughs> okay that not you want to do outro kinde yes uh Um, uh, thank you so much for coming in, Abu yeah, Tamimang. <laughs> Although I did make a mistake on the date that you were supposed to come. Uh, if you would like to badger Abu Tamimang to edit your work, not for free. How much is your charge? <laughs> okay, y'all can discuss yeah. the charges. Uh, you can follow Abu Tamimang on Jurmi Chowing over here. Uh, you can also follow him on oh. Instagram, Jurmi Chowing on there, right? Yeah, it's on Jurmi Jurmi Chowing here. Um, please follow Junor on Instagram as well as subscribe to. Junor on YouTube. Follow Sai on Instagram as well as on his YouTube. Follow me on Instagram if you'd like, as well on my YouTube and where you can listen to the song which we just talked about about uh the, uh, which is uh, the, one of the poems which I uh, wrote, right? Yes. The broken heart. The, the broken, broken heart. heart. We'll plug there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to you want to tell any any of the young people who watch our uh, no, podcast no anything? Messages, no, not messages you. like anything you want to promote <laughs> no, anything, no, nothing no, nothing nothing to pitch you. nothing about uh drink responsibly <laughs> nah, no, no. <laughs> drink irresponsibly yeah. good luck drinking responsibly <laughs> <laughs> on that note, oh, thank you for coming here i hope you do not feel i hope you didn't feel kind of all, no, no, all, I, all I, the I, topics you covered I, over I, here. i enjoyed it yes i think as he said this is like I like that he actually started off this trying to be really composed because he thought that we Yeah, I thought it was quite formal. And then, and then suddenly in the middle we just like Suddenly he went fuck. Last thing you want. Like I said we have no like we have no like this this conversation Okay, so next time it'll be better. All right, love. We we'll definitely will have the next. Okay. okay, the flies are coming in. Okay. And with that guys, thanks for tuning in to Cyport number 9. Join us next time when we will be hitting the double digits. And until then, really black. Till the next episode. <laughs>